Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're gonna be talking about Smart Animate. Now what Smart Animate is, is it's a thing within Figma that really allows to bring your prototypes to life. It's gonna allow you to add some serious motion effects into your prototypes. Some of them can get really complex, and you can even use it to make some really simple animations. I'm gonna get through some of the very basics to get you started and in jumping into like your first project. So let's jump right in. So as you can see uh, in this file, you have it as well. This is the smart animate examples file. We have some examples and we also have some basic prototypes in here. And I'm going to go through each type of example in terms of what you can use it as when you're using smart animate in your prototypes. And these are the different types of properties that you can use. So let's just start off really easy. Let's go right into the first one. Now this is scale. Now what I've done in this prototype. So I've just basically created a basic frame. And to do that, you can just use F to select the frame tool, which is up here. And I just have it set to the, I think it's the iPhone 11 X pro or 11 pro X. It really doesn't matter. You can do this with anything. I just kind of like using this as my base uh, screen or artboard when it comes to just quickly designing for mobile or, or whatever, even to showcase some examples like this. So what we have here is scale. And when we talk about scale, I'm thinking about things that increase in size and things in, that decrease in size. And Smart Anime allows you to do that. So it isn't such a harsh movement from left to right. So let's take a look at what it would look like without Smart Anime. So I'm gonna go into my prototype tab in the top right corner here. So there's the design tab. This panel allows you to basically design easily and the, the prototype tab. And what the prototype uh, tab allows you to do is it allows you to kind of start creating interactions. So if I select, so I have uh, this scale artboard over here, this frame, and then I have another scale frame over here. And if you notice both of my layers here, the circles uh, are named the same. So I have ellipse one and ellipse one. So that's gonna be very key for using Smart Animate. Now let's jump right in. So if I go into my prototype and I literally, let me zoom in here. So if I zoom in, I just used command, you can use control and I use my scroll bar. Or you can do command plus or control plus. So I've zoomed in and I'm just gonna click this little button and drag to this frame. So I've dragged it to the next frame. You can do it manually by just kind of setting those interactions once you click that plus button. But I have click, navigate to scale, I have instant. So I'm just gonna let that go and I'm gonna go look at my prototype right now. I'm gonna click that little play button in this top right corner. So that's gonna load up for us and we see scale. So if I click this, it's going to actually move to the next screen. That's a pretty jarring experience, right? And if we want, we can click on this other ellipse like to actually cause that click effect and go back that way. So if I click on it, it's gonna shrink back to the normal scaled frame. And if I click on the small one, it's gonna scale upward. And here you can kind of define the interaction. You can do it on drag while hovering. You can do it like on mouse enter, leave, up, down. It's really great for making like active states when you're doing like mouse down and up. But for the sake of this example, we're just gonna keep it on click. So here we go, we have it on click and it's just gonna go back. If we go back here, it's gonna live update. So we can see that, boom, boom, back and forth. Now that's pretty jarring. The way we're going to actually make this animate nicely is we're gonna go back and look at these lines. So if we zoom in, we can see the line going from this one back to the smaller one and the larger, uh, the smaller circle going to the larger circle. So let's click the smaller one first and we're gonna go into our interaction details. And from here, we can really define the animation. We can do dissolve. Let's see what dissolve looks like. So we've clicked dissolve and that's a little less abrupt. So it's kind of like this nice fade in. You can see that you can actually, you know, define the different type of animation using easing. We have ease in, ease out, ease in and out, ease in back. So th there's a couple things you can do here, you know, for, for the sake of less complex animations, I wouldn't really spend so much time fine tuning this because it could take a long time. And at the end of the day, some of these effects, you don't need to kind of put so much thought like that into them. As long as you kind of get the basic interaction down and you can fine tune that once it's kind of being implemented. But you know, totally up to you. So I have it on ease out. 
the timing is much more important to me. So if I increase that to like say a thousand milliseconds, that should last for like a full second, that whole uh, interaction. So I'm back here and as you can tell, it moves in really slowly. Now let's actually look at if we actually use Smart Animate. So I'm gonna click Smart Animate over here while I'm clicking on this line. And I'm gonna do the same for this. I'm gonna go back to the larger circle and I'm gonna actually click Smart Animate from the animation menu. I'm gonna leave it at ease out for now and I'm gonna actually set this one to a thousand. So I have a thousand MS, click enter and everything should be updated. Let's go take a look at our prototype. Let's see if the prototype actually updated. So we can see Smart Animate actually takes the original circle that we built and uses that same name to scale it. So if we go back and forth, so you can see you could do a lot of things with using scale as a property that you change between the two elements. So I have it shrinking down and up. You can do it on button clicks and you can make it very subtle just to give feedback to users. I'll actually get into how to do that for a button. So that's how you use scale within Smart Animate.